Hello there, my fellow squiggly friends, and welcome. Welcome to a slightly shorter video concerning the missing creature a few of you warned me about in my previous Squigs video. Like I replied then though, it was not missing, for I simply wanted to do it justice. And in case you haven't figured it out already, this creature is the mighty Squigoth, a beast so powerful that it can rival even titans in size and destructive potential. I am your host, the green-skinned narrator, and without further ado, let us learn a couple of things about it, shall we? A squigoth is the largest species of squig, which are themselves a form of ravenous orcoid creature used by the orcs as food or pack animals. Squigoths are most commonly used by pre-industrial feral orcs, but it can be found among their more technologically advanced spacefaring counterparts as well. However, this variety of squig is just as capable as a weapon, and can sow devastation in its wake as it transports orc boys and their weapons across the battlefield. The Magos biologists of the Adeptus Mechanicus have identified squigoths as a fungal life form, though they are fairly rare and can only be grown to their full size by the specialist breeders known as pig dogs of the Snakebites clan. The size of the squigoth is determined by the effectiveness of the feed formula the breeder gives his creature. The size of a squigoth can range from that of a Lehman Russ tank to the size of a small titan, although generally they are somewhere between these two extremes. Squigoths are reptilian in nature and resemble Terran dinosaurs, although there have also been reports of mammoth-like squigoths adapted to cold climates that possess fur and bigger tusks. Squigoths used for combat will have armored barding placed around the creature's neck and head, along with a small armored howda, or even a fort on the largest of squigoths, built on the creature's back. The fort carries orc boys, along with powerful orc artillery pieces such as super labas. The pinnacle of the runt herd's art, the squigoth is the largest and most aggressive of all the squigs. Bred primarily by the snake bites and sold to any warband or tribe who can afford the price, squigoths are massive quadrupeds with a mouth full of wicked teeth and a very savage demeanor. Every runt herd has his own special formula of squigoth feed, and these recipes are constantly modified and tinkered with to eke out the maximum amount of growth possible. The smallest of squigoths, although still huge and very dangerous, are the product of inferior low-quality feed mixes, and are considered runs among their larger cousins. Large squigoths are the result of carefully crafted diets, supplemented by any orcs who get too close to their mouths. The largest of all, the legendary and vanishingly rare gargantuan squigoths, Bred in the pits of the snake bites, gain their size and strength from the very best and most potent feeds available to their orc caretakers. Squigoths are used as a combination of battle tank, personnel carrier, and mobile siege engine. Their size, utility, and mindless aggression appeal to the orcs on a visceral level. And much like most aspects of orc culture, squigoths seem to be perfectly owned to suit their role and to appeal to the base tastes of their masters. In their natural, unaltered state, squigoths still make excellent beasts of war. Their massive frames are draped in a thick, scaly hide that provides considerable protection, and their brute strength, massive tusks, and crushing feet can pierce even the strongest defenses. An angry squigoth set loose on the battlefield can strike terror into even the most stalwart of hearts. Of course, being bestial and relatively dim-witted, squigoths are very hard to train, and even harder to control, when they are not simply eating their so-called masters. While feral orcs and those of the Snakebites clan don't mind fielding squigoths as they come from the crash, and use them simply as beasts of burden and to transport boys, the other clans fit a number of upgrades to their huge and savage pets. 
When outfitted for war by most of the clans, a Squigoth is first fitted with a suit of Squigoth armor, an articulated suit of cobbled barding. Along with the armor, Squigoths are fitted with fighting platforms called howdahs, which can mount heavy weapons and carry an assortment of boys, both inside or hanging from straps and chains outside. The Hauda can serve as both a mobile artillery platform and an ersatz armored personnel carrier, bringing boys into the fight and providing heavy fire support to the orc forces on the ground. Like their less domesticated cousins found among the Snakebites clan and feral orc tribes, these armored squigoths can cause incredible damage with their natural weapons. And while the boys in the Hauda gleefully blast away with their heavy guns, their mount is usually at work biting, goring, and stomping anything that comes within rage. Gargantuan Squigoths often mount an entire fortress on their back, a fortified and enclosed pillbox bristling with artillery and heavy weapons, and is perhaps one of the most destructive engines of war in the galaxy. Thankfully, such monstrosities are incredibly rare. Despite them coming in various sizes, there are three recognized subspecies of Squigoth by the Ordo Xenos, although the third one is so rare it is almost never seen. The Big Squigoths They are the smaller and far more common breed of the creature, which stands at the size of a medium-class tank. Their smaller size is the result of either youth or the poor breeding methods of the orc caretakers. They often travel in packs, particularly in worlds dominated by feral orcs. The Gargantuan Squigoths Gargantuan Squigoths are monstrous creatures approximately the size of a small imperial titan, probably a warhound. Their size is the result of their breeding using the special, high-quality feed formula trademarked by the Snakebites clan. These giants are sometimes used as mounts by the most powerful of the orc warbosses. The third one is known as the Orchiosaurus. The Orchiosaurus is the largest breed of squigoth that is used by the orcs, even bigger than the gargantuan squigoth. The Orchiosaurus is usually found among feral orc tribes and is rarely, if ever, seen in use by the more technologically advanced orc clans. This massive creature is used as both a beast of burden and as a beast of war by the feral orcs, and the Orchiosaurus is highly valued, not just for the carnage it can cause in battle, but also for the prestige that it can bring to the greenskin tribes that possess one. When the tribe marches to war, they are accompanied by the trumpeting calls and the thunderous tread of their mighty squigoths and orchiosauruses. The creature is grown from the size of a regular squigoth up to its full size by the perfect mix of fungus nutrients and tender loving care provided by a feral orc pig dog. During combat, the pig dog which nurtured the creature will sit proudly atop the swaying howda on its back bellowing out orders as the scurrying gun crews load and fire their weapons, wincing as the odd grot or orc loses its grip and plummets out of the tower. The Orchiosaurus is capable of carrying dozens of orcs, whether boys, knobs, or wild boys, and several units of Gretchen into combat upon its back-mounted deck. These orcs will man any weapons that are installed upon the armored decking attached to the creature's broad back. These weapons can include twin-linked big shooters and big guns. The Orchiosaurus's hide is as thick and protective as armored plating, and can withstand tremendous amounts of damage. The orcs augment this protection even more by attaching armored plating to the creature, giving it even more durability. The Squigoth itself is fully capable of smashing infantry and even armored vehicles beneath its massive limbs, and can use its large tusks to gore enemy combatants that get too close. If an Orchiosaurus is mortally wounded during combat, it may take a long time to actually realize that it is hurt, or indeed dead, and it may go into an uncontrollable panic-induced rage. In this state, it will thrash around and attack anything in sight, 
friend or foe alike. The Orchiosaurus is capable of rampaging like nothing else and can keep this up for up to 10 minutes until it finally dies. The creature can also accidentally kill itself by falling down steep terrain or into deep water where it is so heavy it will simply drown. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the giant Squigoffs and the even more impressive Orchiosaurus. Would you like having such a creature in your army? What would you do with it? Let me know in the comments below. Was this video entertaining or informative? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for more videos. And if you'd like to keep the lore videos coming, please go check my Patreon page, the link for which is in the video description. Thank you kindly for watching, and I wish you a very orky day. The Emperor protects.